Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving deep into the world of home battery storage, specifically Tesla Powerwall 3. We've talked about Tesla here on this channel, but Tesla offers something else, a DC expansion pack. This raises a crucial question. Do you need it? Is it worth the extra cost? What is it? How much is it? In this video, we will break down the Powerwall 3 and its DC expansion pack, comparing their feature, capabilities, and ultimately helping you decide which setup is perfectly fit for your home. At the end, I will also try to save you some headache with your installer based on my personal lessons that I have learned with my first few DC expansion packs and Powerwall 3 jobs. So just make sure to stick to the end. Now let's get started. Now let's start with the star of the show, the Tesla Powerwall 3. This is the core unit, the brains and the brawn of your home battery system. It is our fully integrated solar and battery inverter along with our battery storage all in one. So just call it three in one. It has an 11.5 kilowatt AC rated inverter. This is our AC output, what goes into your home or is sold back to the grid. And it can support up to maximum DC size of 20 kilowatts. This is what's up on your roof or on the ground mount. This is our solar system. Powerwall 3 has this awesome feature, which is getting very, very common with hybrid systems that can send five kilowatts continuously from solar to the battery at the same time that 11.5 kilowatts of solar is converted to AC power, leading to potential total DC power of 16.5 kilowatts. So if you have a really good roof in the Southern states, I would not oversize much more than 16 to 17 kilowatts. Now this helps alleviate clipping concerns and enable sizing the DC system larger, but only if the battery is being used in that way that it will have available charge power during the peak solar production hours of the day. After we review the DC packs, we will go over different system sizes scenarios and I will definitely try to suggest the Powerwall match that will be perfect for your situation. So just make sure again to stick around and wait till the end. Oh, and of course, don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button. Thank you so much. Now, okay, back to the video. Powerwall 3 has a load start capacity of 185 LRA, which allows you to start major home appliances such as HVAC. The Powerwall 3 is smart too, connecting to your home's electrical panel and managing energy flow. Everything is done automatically, very set it and forget it. So the homeowner doesn't pretty much have to worry about anything. Now let's talk about the Powerwall sibling, the DC expansion pack. This is where the things get interesting. Essentially the expansion pack adds more battery capacity to your system. It doesn't have inverter itself. It works in conjunction with the Powerwall 3. Think of it as an extra fuel tank for your car. It increases your overall storage capacity, allowing you to ride out longer power outages or store more solar energy. This is a big advantage for larger homes or those with higher energy consumption or people who live in areas prone to extended power outages. The DC expansion packs have the same storage capacity as the main unit. All the environmental and mechanical specifications are pretty much the same as the main unit besides the lack of the inverter, which is why it is also a little less expensive than the main unit exactly because of that reason. No conversion and not much of electrical work needed to be done by your installer side either. So now I think we should look at different scenarios so we can understand which one would be the best fit for you. How do they stack up against one another? The Powerwall 3 is your all-in-one solution, providing both power, storage, and conversion. It's excellent for smaller homes to medium-sized homes with moderate energy needs. For example, if you have a small home that needs an eight kilowatt system that faces direct south, you can start with one Powerwall 3 and then add DC packs if you need that extra juice for extended outages. But it makes no sense to add a second Powerwall 3 and add another inverter capacity. It would actually be very wasteful to do that. Now, if you need a 15 kilowatt system, it might now make sense to have two Powerwalls. You may have two or more HVAC units, a pool, hot tub, EV charging. In this case, doubling the max continuous output may be needed for a larger home. 
then you also should remember that those two power walls can each take up to three expansion packs. So you can then add more storage capacity as well for longer outages if needed. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Aww. That was actually perfect. Thank you, Grzesiu. I will be right there. <laughs> Now, if you go over 17 kilowatts, even though Tesla says it can take up to 20 kilowatts DC, I probably would not go over that 16 to 17 kilowatts threshold, especially with a good south-facing roof. So just remember, properly designed system from the get-go might cost you more money up front, but will actually save you more in the long run. If your installer will mismatch your solar array to too small of a battery, it will actually end up you will actually end up spending $15,000 and your battery might be dead in 2 hours into your outage. I would probably be very upset. Remember, a rule of thumb is like a 4-ton AC unit uses 4 kilowatt hours per hour of runtime. So your 13 kilowatt hour battery might be dead in three to four hours. And that is just HVAC usage. What about everything else in the house? So just keep that in mind. All right, guys, now let's talk about the big lessons learned from the first few of our first installs with the DC packs. So every customer, or I guess almost every customer, wants to have their battery installed on the wall, raised above the ground. I wanted it too, and we literally just did it as well. But when now you want to add your DC packs, you now have a problem with space because you have to wall mount your DC expansion packs adjacent to each other and order a specific wall mount kit, which by the way, a lot of distributors did not account for or properly plan for at the beginning. I guess this was part of that learning curve at the beginning when Tesla came out with that. Now they ordered all of or a bunch of DC packs for us installers, but not a whole of the wall mount kits or the wire harnesses. So if you're a smart consumer, you can ask your installer as a courtesy to just make sure that they have that in stock. So if you plan to add DC packs in the future, I would start floor mounting your batteries from the get-go instead of doing it on the wall and then using all of your wall space. All right, so to summarize it all, the Powerwall 3 is your all-in-one solution, providing both power storage and conversion. It's excellent for smaller to medium-sized homes with moderate energy needs. The DC expansion packs, on the other hand, is all about extending your storage capacity. It is great add-on for those who need more power, longer runtime, or want to maximize their energy use. The key difference is just the inverter. The Powerwall 3 has one, the expansion pack does not. This means that you need a Powerwall 3 to use the expansion pack. You cannot buy the expansion pack on its own. Ultimately, the best choice depends on your individual needs and circumstances. Hopefully this video helped you understand the differences between these two. If you have any other questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more home tech and different reviews and comparisons. Thank you so, so much for watching. Happy birthday to me and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.